Hey, solopreneurs, Gabe here. Today on the show, we have Nancy Becker, the Chief Flying Pig Wrangler of Business Success Unlimited. She's a speaker, a trainer, a radio show host, author, and a business coach. In business, in one form or another, since she was 12 years old, Nancy founded Business Success Unlimited in its current form in 2009. She has a fantastic story. I can't wait for you to hear it. And just remember this, she makes pigs fly. So please enjoy this conversation with Nancy. Nancy, thank you for being on the podcast. Gabe, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to this. Good, good. I'm I'm glad. I mean, we I was just on your podcast here a few weeks ago, and uh, it was a great experience, and I'm excited to have you on. And one of the things you're going to talk about is how solopreneurs can get unstuck. And before we go there, I'd, I'd love to hear your story. And that's what got me really interested in having you on this podcast is share your story if you would. Sure. Talk about getting unstuck. <laughs> that's a big, big part of my life. I was, I've been in business for over 35 years and I was streaming along. I was flying high. Things were great. Um, and then all of a sudden, bam, everything came to a screaming halt. I was in a hit and run car accident and didn't think a whole lot about it. I thought I had twisted and sprained my ankle and went happily along my way until I couldn't walk. And the doctors looked at it and said, yeah, I think there's something wrong, but we can't really tell what it is. You need a specialist. Well, seven years later, 16 surgeries later, um, I am in a wheelchair. I am not walking. I am, uh, you know, I walk a little bit, but most of the time I get to cruise in my uh, super galactic wheelchair. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we've just recently moved from in the Midwest up north, Michigan, down to Alabama. And they have no clue what it is that I have. I contracted um, complex regional pain syndrome, which is a very, very, very severe nerve damage. And my body from head to toe is in extreme pain 24 seven. And they just never even heard of it before and just kind of roll their eyes. And in fact, I can't even cut my toenails because it hurts so bad and my husband can't do it we have to have a specialist a podiatrist and we went to the podiatrist and I said I need to have my toenails cut and she looks at me and she says well I guess we're just gonna have to amputate your legs in all seriousness <laughs> and I went uh excuse me I don't think so but with all of that, where did my business stand? You know, for a year and a half after this it all happened and, and all the journey I was going on with my health, my business just tanked. There was nothing there. And one day, and I sat in the corner and I felt sorry for myself and I said, I'm just going to quit. I don't want to even be here anymore, uh, which I never you know, got to that point, but it was like, you know, I, I just can't do anything. I'm just going to sit here and watch TV. And then one morning I woke up and it was like I got hit in the back of the head and somebody saying, get off your tuchus and get out there. You've got a lot more to do in this world. You have a life changing disability, not a life ending disability. And from that moment on, I just dug in and I started Googling and I started having focus groups and, you know, putting out questions on Facebook for people. And I now have a more successful business than I had before all of this happened. So it's, it's really good to get unstuck. <laughs> Very, yeah, very good. So, so what was it that, like you said, the, the slap on the head, what was it? Was it just a, a mindset shift? It was it like a, I'm sick of this 
just pardon my language, I'm sick of this shit. I'm going to move on to the next thing. I mean, what what was it that caused that? Well, it, it really, to me, and this shows my beliefs, and I really believe that God was watching over me and hit me out. Have you ever seen NCIS and the Gibbs slap? You know, you could Google that, and Gibbs is standing there, and he's hitting them on the back of the head. And I really feel like, God gave me a gimp slap <laughs> and said, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You know, there's there are people out there who have it so much worse than you do. Be blessed, be thankful, and allow your talents in your mouth to work for me and help other people get to the point where they're successful too. I truly believe it. And frankly, that's how faith works. Uh, it's amazing. So help, help me understand, what was the business that you were operating? What were you doing prior to the accident? And then and then, what are you doing now helping you know people get unstuck? Right. Um, originally, I started with my mom and dad back in the early 80s. I started what you would now call a virtual assistant business, except back then it was brick and mortar. We answered phones. We did tape transcription. I transcribed interviews like this. And uh, from and I moved from Michigan after college. I moved from Michigan to Washington, D.C. And there I opened at the time, one of the very, very first executive suites and started renting office space to people. And they would, we started to get together on a monthly, you know, first it was Christmas and Thanksgiving and holidays and we would have potlucks and we would do things together. And then it started to be a monthly get together where everybody in the suites and people from outside would come in and we'd sit around and we'd say, you know, I've got this problem or I've got this issue or I want to do this. What do you guys think about it? There were no mastermind programs really back then, even though masterminds have been around since, you know, the early um, 1900s. People didn't do them. They just were not a thing. But we actually started doing a mastermind program with the people that were in the suites. And so my business started turning away from the rental that that and the transcribing and all that. I had staff to do that. I didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to be able to support people. And so that's where the whole mastermind and all of those things started to come in. Well, then we decided, then I got sick there. So I've had many, many illnesses over the years, but I wound, I woke up one night in the middle of the night and I couldn't see. I was blind for two years and because I had glaucoma and I was, I had four in two years time, I had four surgeries. And during that time, I had to turn my office over to my office manager who totally ran it into the ground. So by the time I was ready to come back and run my business again, I had no business to run. Oh and boy. yeah, and at that point, my now husband said, we're moving. Your parents are in their late 80s. There's nobody there to help them. We're going back to Michigan so that we can take care of your parents. So we, I closed down my business, what was left of it, and we packed up and we moved to Michigan. Well, we lived in this teeny tiny little town where, uh, consider traffic in Washington, D.C., you know, and then consider traffic where we were living. And my husband said his only traffic jam at that point was a horse and buggy pulling a boat. We lived in Amish country. Okay. <laughs> and having a business was really a bad thing. People did not want, it was, it was the, the dark side of Mayberry. You know, they didn't, they, they refused to get a Home Depot. They refused a casino. They refused to have any of these things coming into town because it would cause a commotion in the city. So there was no business there. I couldn't open a, a, an executive suites. I couldn't, you know, do a mastermind program there. So I started traveling 
and I would go to Detroit, I'd go to Chicago, I'd go to Grand Rapids, I'd go to Fort Wayne in Indy, and I would do training sessions, standing up for hours at a time, kind of like TED Talks, but yeah. they weren't they weren't TED Talks, you know, but, but they were that kind of thing where I would I would talk to businesses about different aspects of business, customer service, you know, marketing, sales, all those kinds of things. And we were on the road five days a week. And then here comes the accident. And so everything shuts down. And I can, the only traveling I was doing was going four and a half hours to Chicago every three weeks for doctor's appointments. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was totally at that point that, I'm hurting. I'm in pain. I've had surgery after surgery. They're telling me they don't know what to do for me, and I just have to learn to live with it. And I was devastated. And the farthest thing from my mind was trying to once again figure out how to change my business. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't even. We were living in the basement of my mom and dad's house at that point. And we had converted part of it so that we had a refrigerator and a microwave, but there was no bathroom. There was no shower. I couldn't get up the stairs to do those things. So I had to use a porta potty. I had to do sponge baths. I couldn't even really take care of myself. I lived on this little tiny day bed. Oh my goodness. And yeah. never got off for a year and a half. And then, like I said, I woke up one morning and I got a headache. <laughs> and from there on, there goes the business. I got started again, and I'm loving every minute of it. So how, how did you get it started? I mean, what was it that, that, I mean, obviously, you know, God comes and slaps you in the head and says, all right, let's go. Get, get, get moving. How did you get the business started? I mean, that's, that's a feat in itself. Well, it, you know, literally it was, I just decided I got to figure out what to do. Well, at that point, there wasn't even Zoom. Zoom wasn't around. There was Skype. There were, you know, little things like that. And I said, all right, if I can't go to the people, how do I get the people to come to me? And I just started doing research and I started reading books and I started talking to people and, and I would reach out to people. I've been on Facebook since 2008 when it first started, you know, and long before my accident. My accident was in 14. So, you know, um, I, I had at that point, I've got almost 5,000 um, contacts now, but at that point I probably had a couple of thousand. And I would send them private messages and I'd say, hey, but I hadn't done this switch yet to the chronic illness. I was still just working with businesses who wanted to grow. And, and I'd reach out to them and I'd say, hey, I've got these great programs. I've got this wonderful mastermind, you know, where we all just sit together and talk and share. And by the way, my mastermind is 10 years old and I've still got members in it that I got 10 years ago when I first started the mastermind, which I'm really proud of. But it was just a lot of work. But what else did I have to do? I was just sitting and I had a computer, you know, I had my laptop. So I just sat there and I, and I, just did all this stuff over and over and over again and it just started to take off but it's not been easy and then um a couple of years ago i decided to go to a podcast convention and we got there i i sent them a message and said, hey, I want to come, but my husband's got to come with me. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't navigate this stuff by myself. Can he come and help me? And they were very gracious and said, yes, no problem. So my husband and I show up and it's this huge, big conference center where we're only one of about three or four conferences that's going on at the same time. We're in the basement. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there's an elevator no problem right well they didn't bother to tell us that 
on the one side, there actually were exits to the outside. All we knew is that we were in the basement. We had to take an elevator to get down there. And it's this huge place that's got all the vendors in the middle and these little breakout rooms all around the outside of where the vendors are. My husband wheels me into, because I didn't have my super duper wheelchair at that point, it was just a push wheelchair. He wheeled me into one of the rooms where I wanted to go for the breakout session, pushed me all the way to the back so that I wouldn't be in the way of anybody, and he leaves to go to another one. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am sitting in my wheelchair all the way to the back and people start coming in they're leaning up against the walls they're sitting on the floor every single chair this is obviously pre-pandemic you know they're sitting in the chairs they are just jam-packed into this room and the fire alarm goes off <laughs> just goes whoosh <laughs> towards the door and I have no use of my right arm either it's my legs and my arm and all this so I'm trying to crank this wheelchair out one-handed and I'm going in circles <laughs> and <laughs> these people are just rushing out of the room and the fire alarm's going and the fire alarm's going and I'm going oh, no, 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 no. and finally one lady um, says, can I help you? <laughs> she grabs a hold of the wheelchair and pushes me out. And as she pushes me out, uh, I see my husband running, you know, in slow motion across the room to come get me. And we get out and we go, oh, well, now we know that there's an outside from the basement. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but that got me thinking that, and at this point, people should have known about ADA rules. They should have thought, especially since I had told them I was coming in my wheelchair, that they needed to make arrangements for handicapped, disabled, whatever you want to call it. And they had, it had not entered their minds. And I thought, I almost didn't come for this very reason. I just knew that there wasn't going to be any support for me and I was going to have problems. And then I said, you know what? I'm glad I came because now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm supposed to be working with other people who have disabilities and chronic illnesses to help them figure out how to maneuver issues in their business that no one's telling them about. You know, and I'm not talking the mindset so much as I am talking, how do I get out of a basement that's on fire? You know, how do I, how do I talk to people when I'm stuck at home? Well, now thanks to COVID, we all know how to talk to people when we're stuck at home. But a couple of years ago, we didn't. So I, in my head came this idea that there are a lot of, 75% of the American population has at least one chronic illness. And people with chronic illness tend to hide. They're, uh, sadly, they're looked down on, they're, they're not seen as being adequate, let alone being successful. They're just sort of pushed into the, the corners, like I was, and left. And there's nobody there to help them. And I said, that's my calling. Not only am I out there to help businesses grow, but I'm out there to help those people who have challenges and, and different things like that. And now, talking post-pandemic, it can be, it doesn't have to be a disability. It can just be, I've been dealing with my kids, homeschooling them for a year now, and I don't know how to pick my business back up and run it again. Things have changed. What do I do? You know, so that's where I'm at today. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Uh, did the convention center actually caught on catch on fire or was no, somebody, it a, uh, somebody pulled it twice <laughs> we just went we just got back into the building and got situated and it went off again oh, <laughs> somebody no. did it twice but we knew how to get out the second day <laughs>
Did did you was your husband able to get you out the second time, or did you have a good Samaritan step up again? No, he hadn't. He had not let me go by that point, so he got me out. But you know, it continued for the whole. It was a week long convention, and things continued because where all the vendors were, they needed electricity. So there were cables running all over the floor. They the cables weren't tucked down. They weren't taped down. They were loose. You know, so here I get with my wheelchair and I'm. Trying to get, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get over the cables. There's teeny tiny little angles that you have to turn and maneuver to get from one aisle to the other, and you've got hundreds of people meandering. And I'm going, excuse me, excuse me. I got to the point where I got a horn and went, <laughs> <laughs> so that people would get out of my way. <laughs> That's great. I absolutely love that. So, so let, let's transition now. So you are now helping people with chronic pain get unstuck. And there's all kinds of areas of chronic pain and like you said, disabilities, etc. So, so who is your typical person that you're working with? What are some of the things that you're currently doing to help those people get unstuck? Well, I'm working with established women business owners and some very smart men <laughs> who have decided that they want to continue running their businesses they understand the concept of running a business but they no longer can do it in the ways they used to one of my main issues for as an example is i have very short-term memory lapses and i can't remember things so on my other screen here i've got my calendar up And it's got every single thing that I've got to do today on that calendar. And that calendar is connected to my Alexa, who I'm whispering so she doesn't hear me. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But it's connected to that so that 15 minutes before a meeting, she goes off and she says, reminder, you know, it's time for whatever. It's connected to my phone so that if I'm out and about, I get a reminder telling me, hey, something's about to start. It can be as simple as that. It can be a piece of software like I love Acuity, which is also a calendar program, but it does, it's a CRM. It does all of my finances talking about money in a few minutes, it connects to my bank so that if if someone decides they want to take one of my programs, they click on a link to sign up for that program. That um, Acuity will send them back a link and a Google Doc that they fill out. And there's a place to put credit card information in that Google Doc. That Google Doc then sends it to Stripe. And the beginning of the month, every single month, Stripe goes in and takes out the money for that program. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to try to remember to bill someone every month and send them an invoice. I don't have to chase after them to say, hey, you forgot to pay me. You know, I don't have to beg and plead. My client doesn't have to try to remember. And it's all done seamlessly. And then, you know, two or three days after the money gets taken out of their account, it's in my account and it's a done deal. So we look at those kinds of things. We want to be able to automate, to run a business more easily, which gives us the ability to, if I don't feel good today, I can stay in bed. And yet I don't have to worry about getting my daily to-dos taken care of because I got them hooked up to the, what is it, the uh, IFTTT or whatever that program is, you know, that automatically does things. I use Evernote and Evernote's connected to all these different programs and my business can run seamlessly for a time without me being there because I've got it programmed to do that. So what you've done is you've, you've taken advantage of all of the automations and the integrations that you possibly can 
to set up the systems, which we've talked about often on this podcast, is systems to make sure that things get taken care of the way they should. That's amazing. That is really uh, impressive. I didn't know that Acuity had a CRM inside of it and a connection. So is that uh, all in Acuity or is that like an integration through Zapier or how does that work? It's all in Acuity. It, the only place where it goes out, I mean, it's it's like we connect the Google Docs to it. Um, it goes from Acuity to the Google Docs, from the Google Docs to Stripe. But it's all set up through Acuity. It's not Zapier. It's not any of that. It's all, you're in Acuity. You say, I, I want this Google Doc to do this. So when somebody signs up for this program, it automatically emails them the form. That is impressive. It is. I love, I, and I'm not an affiliate because they don't have affiliates. <laughs> I wish I was because I, you know, I tell everybody what a wonderful program it is. And they have a free, they have a free version too. So it's not, you know, not expensive at all. Yeah. I use Acuity and I had no idea that that had, had those connections. I would use it as my calendar and uh, all of my client meetings as well as prospect meetings and podcast meetings, everything is all run through Acuity, but I didn't know that. Is it then also, uh, do you have it connected from Stripe to like a bookkeeping piece or yep. is that Good inside books. of you have, so you also have then Stripe connected in through your QuickBooks. That is very impressive. That right there, everybody, is like worth listening to this podcast right here to hear those pieces that are already built into Acuity. So if you're an Acuity user, there are some tremendous, um, tremendous integrations that are uh, in there that, that Nancy's using. Where do they find those, uh, Nancy? They hire me. <laughs> <laughs> they hire you. I love it. I love it. That's really good. But no, I mean, that that really is what I do because I've done the research. I know these programs are out there. Um, it doesn't, you know, if Acuity is not your cup of tea, one of my clients uses Square for her their photography business. And they use Square for their, you know, payments for their photography business. But she was frustrated because they're, everybody that wanted an appointment had to call them in order to make an appointment. And she says, I work from nine to five, and this is a nighttime and a weekend gig. I can't answer that phone during the day and I lose clients. I lose potential business. What am I going to do? So we sat down and we looked at Acuity and she says, no, I don't like that. And we looked at Calendly and she says, no, I don't like that. Well, lo and behold, Square, which she was already using, also has a calendar program in it. So everything she now does, and we literally sat together for an entire afternoon going through the different programs, trying to find one that she felt comfortable with and liked. And then when she found that this worked, we set it up and got it working together. She didn't have to do any of it on her own. I was right there with her. That's what I do. I love that. You make people's lives much, much easier, which is the whole goal. Yep, it is. And it's and it works for everybody, but it's so important for someone who doesn't have, you know, as much energy or strength or mental power anymore as they used to just because they're so filled with pain like I've got to take two days off next week because we're going from where we are two hours north to Nashville to Vanderbilt Hospital to see specialists so I'm going to be out of the office for two days next week so I have to figure out how my business is going to run without me being here luckily I have a team that can and that's another thing that we talk about is does it make sense you and I talked about hiring out marketing you know do the things that you can do that you're good at. Don't waste the energy on things that somebody else or something else can do for you. Amen. I have been uh, preaching that for a long time. The crazy thing is, though, is, is I'll even say this. I mean, my career, my practice that I started back in 2008, right at the beginning of the financial crisis, um, all of a sudden the, the market goes down, my revenues go down. It's like, okay, well, I... I 
had to go through a, a painful period of letting my staff go. And then I was burnt enough that for 10 years, I just did everything by myself, which was ridiculous. But it also had that little piece in my head that was like, oh, I can't afford to pay somebody. I'm just, I'm going to just keep growing my business and do it all myself. But it's amazing when you then start to find those people without having to spend a ton of money to delegate even five hours a week off and then 10 hours a week. Now I'm delegating 20 to 40 hours a week. It's absolutely amazing how much now freedom is available to do things. And so you then step in and help consult on those things as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, it's, it's, there is a, you know, a process and that's what we work on is the processes and where do you start and where do you finish? And along the way, there's these detours and side roads and you know you go down this road and you say oh well this makes sense I'm going to add this and you know so uh, one of the very first things I do with anyone when they start to work with me is figure out where they want to be down the road and then we look at how are they going to get there and everybody is unique I do do work with like with the mastermind I do do work with small groups but even within those small groups there's a lot of individual touch that goes along with it and um, you know it's just I've worked with thousands of, of people over the past 35 years and it's but to me the thing that's the most important and this is we'll get into that with some of your questions in a minute but um, to me, it is most important that I help someone else. I love those aha moments. The photographer that I was just talking about, she'll call me at 9 or 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday night and say, I just figured this out. Thank you so much. And I'm going, I'm sleeping. Yay! <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I want them to succeed. Right. And that, that means you're in it for the right reasons, which is amazing. Yeah, those, those aha moments are just priceless. Yeah, they are priceless. Um, so the, the other pieces, tell me, the, the mastermind groups that you're involved in, you've got how many people normally in a mastermind group that you work with? I never let more than very, very most 10. Usually we keep it to six because my mastermind program is not a, I'm not normal. My programs are normal, <laughs> but it's, um, the, the actual breakdown of what we do is everybody starts out the meeting with a success. You know, you, I want you to look at your successes, whether they're big or small, because they're all successes. And that's really important is to get in your head. And if you haven't, a, a tip for you guys, for the, you listeners, is if you have not looked at your business for the last six months to a year, really looked at it and written down successes, you will be amazed. And I highly recommend you do that because it will, you'll go, oh my goodness, I didn't realize this had happened. So every single meeting we start out with successes and then we have a topic that we talk about in it and it may be something like um, how I need a calendar, what am I going to do or you know I'm we're working on writing newsletters, do newsletters still have value and, and what do you put into a newsletter these days that are going to get it opened or, or we may be talking about social media so there's a training that goes on in this. And during the training, everybody says, oh, I have a question, stop a minute. Or, yeah, I tried that and that really works well. Or, you know, I didn't, I didn't get that. I don't see how that's gonna help me. You know, so they, they throw out the questions, they throw out the comments and everybody in the group shares. It's not just me teaching, it's, it's a joint effort. And then at the very end of the meeting, if anybody has a specific question that doesn't have to do with what we've been talking about, they get the opportunity to throw out that question. And they also have a point of accountability where they will say, I am going to work on whatever between now and our next meeting. And I'll let you know how it goes. 
I love it. Yeah, the, the coaching program that I'm involved in for financial advisors has a lot of those similar. We have mastermind groups that we get together. There are five of us advisors from all over the country. And it's amazing the the knowledge that can be shared. But it, there, there's also this piece of I'm with my people. And, and when I'm with my people, I can share things and learn from them and 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 really for lack of a put it, take your business to a whole another level. It's it's a lot of fun. You you talk to or you read about these gurus that are out there and you know, they will tell you that their number one success is not overnight. It takes years. Um, I think the latest statistics say give it about seven years in order to really get your business off the ground and going. But they will also say to you that it is most important to have a group of peers around you so that you're not all alone, that you've got a sense of feeling that I've got somebody who's got my back, you know, and that they can answer questions that you may have because it doesn't matter how successful you are you're still going to have questions you're still not going to know everything and just because you don't know it maybe the person next to you might know the answer to that question oh yeah and and the thing is is there's always been somebody else who's already done it so whether it's a book whether it's a friend whether it's a podcast whatever it might be there's always somebody who's already done it um so I, I gathered a couple little nuggets out of there that I want to just share, and then we'll make our transition uh, to the questions that I normally ask each of my guests. But the couple nuggets is I, I heard you say, it wasn't in these words, but it, it, it means the same, is begin with the end in mind is what I'm hearing. Your people that you bring on, your clients, where are we trying to go? And the crazy thing is, is that's the same as we do in financial planning. Where are we going? How do we need to get you there? What are the steps? And you're doing the same thing uh, with your with your individual clients as well as your mastermind. This is what I'm, I'm hearing. And then the other thing is, is we don't as solopreneurs have to be alone. There is a fantastic opportunity, whether it's in a mastermind or in a coaching program or whatever it might be, to not be alone and be able to bounce ideas off of people to really learn to help take your business to another level, which is, um, which is fantastic. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, Nancy. Important, important stuff. It may not seem important, but it really, really is. And, and you know, it's, um, I love The Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland. Those are, you know, those are my two favorite things. And in both of those films, there is a, a time, like with the scarecrow, the, um, Dorothy's trying to figure out which way to go. And he says, well, you can go that way. Or you can go that way, you know, it, it doesn't care. And the uh, Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland will say, if you don't know where you're going, anywhere will get you there. So if you don't know, it drives me nuts when I ask somebody what they want to do, where they want to be in five years, and they'll comment, I don't even know what I want for dinner tonight, let alone five years. You know, I just want to just go, oh, how do you expect to run a business? You know, if you don't have at least an idea of where you want to be at that time. Yeah, a, a, a vision, a well thought out vision. And the, the crazy thing is, is most solopreneurs, what do they do? They, they, they found something they're good at. Or they found a, a, a business they wanted to start and they just started getting clients on and got busy. And that then begets more clients, that begets more problems, more issues. And the next thing you know, you're five years down the road, 10 years down the road, whatever it might be. And you're like, holy crap, I've never even thought about where I'm going with this business. That's and right. so that's a huge thing. That's a, a tremendous value of having what I would call a coach in your, back, in your back pocket. Whether it's someone like Nancy or a financial advisor or another coach out there, that's a tremendous value to help kind of take you down that road. And I highly recommend having financial advisors because I'm not the money person. I can tell you, you need to have money, but I'm certainly not the person to say where to put that money. <laughs> I, I'll agree with you there. Yes, we do need to have financial advisors in the world, even though I am one. Yes. <laughs> so so speaking of money, we're going to make this transition. There's, there's questions that I always ask every one of my guests when it comes to money because we've all made 
you know, smart decisions. We've all made mistakes and we've all learned from those things. And so my first question for you, Nancy, is what is the smartest thing you've ever done regarding money? And tell me that story. I'm still learning. <laughs> um, can I start with the, the dumbest thing I've ever done? Of course. <laughs> and lean into that? Yeah. For, for, and this actually goes back to where do you want to be in five years. Uh, for a long time, it was, I want, to, I want to have a business. I want to make money. I have bills to pay. So I did, you know, I made money, I, but at the end of the month, when I'm balancing my checkbook, I may not have the money in there to pay the bills because I haven't created the process and the knowledge and the goal for what I wanted. Yeah, you know, it's like the, the comment, well, I must have money. I've still got checks, you know, it's, there's no intention intentionality there it's just you you do your day and I had staff I had a ten thousand dollar a month rent I was paying on my office space and you know I didn't have a clue where that money was coming from because I didn't focus on it I worked in my business I didn't work on my business um, smart things to do right up front is to open a separate checking account in your business name where your money that you earn goes. But I had to learn those things. I didn't just automatically jump into it and do it. Um, you know, the, the smartest thing was actually starting to create, to sit down, to do the budgets, to figure out where the money was coming from, to say, I want to make, not to say I want to make money, but to say I want to make $500,000. You've, you've got a goal then, and then you can say, okay, if I want that $500,000, how the heck am I going to get it? and break everything down so that I know I need to make so much from my masterminds. I need to make so much from my one-on-one -on -one programs. I have a structure and a strategy in place and I don't willy-nilly go out and spend money on things. I, I figure out whether it makes sense for me to, to buy something and if it's going to help me in the long run and I'm willing to I had to buy a new computer yesterday because my computer was dying I went ahead and I bought the best computer I could find because if I paid two hundred dollars for one it might last me a little while but then I would be all over again looking and and putting new stuff in and and I'll be able to do so much more. I'll be able to create better podcasts, create better business programs because I've got a better computer. I didn't want to spend anywhere near as much money as I spent, but I figured out that that made the most sense. So I think that's the smart things. Yeah. And and what I'm hearing from you is is the vision. What is the vision for my business? Then where does my budget fall into place for, for, for that, that vision? And then how, what are the smart decisions I need to make along the way? So that's your, that's your smartest piece. Your mistake historically from what I heard was, all right, I didn't know where all this was going. I didn't have a vision where my money was supposed to go. I wasn't truly budgeting and therefore I was just kind of flailing through is, and, and that's quite normal for a lot of solopreneurs. It's like, okay, well, my business checkbook is kind of like my personal checkbook and whatever money's in there or my business account is kind of like my personal account and whatever it is I can just use to live on. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. Uh, yeah, not at all. There, there's a lot more steps that need to go into, into that and thought process. And so that brings me to uh, the next question, which is the, what does mastering your finances mean to you? <sighs> Exactly that, you know, it's, it's a sense of relaxation, it's a sense of lack of worry and stress 
because I know I'm covered. It's, it's a feeling that if an emergency comes up, like my computer dying on me, I can handle it without going upside down and crazy. You know, I, I know that because I've been planning and budgeting and have money and, and can do these things, that I'm okay and I don't have to worry about it. That's peace of mind. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> You, you just said it a couple different ways. That's all. No big deal. So, so Nancy, this has been absolutely a, a joy to have you on the podcast. And I've loved hearing the story and your lessons and, 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 and then about your business. And so how, how can my listeners find you? What's the best way? Well, uh, they can find all of my different programs at www.linktree forward slash Nancy Becker. And that's L-I-N-K-T-R period E-E forward slash Nancy Becker. B-E-C-H-E-R. And that'll take you to my website. It'll take you to LinkedIn. It'll take you to Facebook. It's got all of my links. And that's actually another tip is use Linktree and then you don't have to worry about all the different links. You're full of all kinds of hacks, which I love. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. And I would expect that. That's what you do every single day. That makes a lot of sense. Very good. And the name of your mastermind group, is it The Gathering? It's The Gathering. Yes. Um, can I? Do I have time to tell a little story about that? Please do. Yes. For years, I have talked about don't wait till pigs fly. You know, you can't just sit there and say, I want to do something, but then just wait. You know, well, I've got a telephone number that I've given out. Why aren't people calling me? Well, I have business cards. Why aren't people? Have you gone places and handed out the business cards? Have you been on Facebook? Have you, you know, you can't just sit and wait for pigs to fly. You've got to get out there and make them fly. So everything I do for my business is around flying pigs. So one of my programs is called the Flying Pig Academy. Another program is called the Flight Plan, and the Mastermind is actually called the Gathering because pigs gather. They're not they're not loners. They like to be in in groups, and they all have to do with flying big. I love it. Absolutely love that. That's a great way to end. Nancy, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you so much. Well, solopreneurs, I truly enjoyed that conversation. It was fantastic. My three takeaways for you as you get ready to finish this podcast is one, there are a ton of integrations in Acuity. You might be worth spending some time looking into those or better yet, reach out to Nancy to see if she can help you. Two, make sure that you begin with the end in mind. Many of us start our businesses and we just get rolling and kind of forget about where we're trying to go because we're stuck in the minutia. So make sure you take the time to think about the vision of where you're going. Begin with your end in mind on any new projects as well as look at your business from that standpoint. And the other piece of the puzzle is seek out automations. There are all kinds of automations out there that she shared that you could be utilizing to help make yourself even more productive. So once again, thank you very much for listening. I truly appreciate your time. And please go to the podcast app. Give us five stars and share us with a friend. Thanks. Thanks.